Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Well, seeing how this is February, the month of romance based around a saint that your uniquely lazy ass will never bother to research, I think we should dedicate this enchanted time of year to the month of love. And what better way to start off this month of love than the love one gives to a child? No, no, and your jacuzzi of barbed wire in hell is waiting for you. I'm talking about the love from parent to child, as demonstrated in The Odd Life of Timothy Green. This is the story about a couple who can't have a child until one magically appears in the backyard and shows them the quirks and whimsy of what it means to be a parent. Now granted, a lot of people didn't like this film when it first came out. In fact, many declared they'd rather pass a marble bag of kidney stones. But I'm sure such an innocent story couldn't have anything that horrible in it. How bad could something like this possibly be? Something so adorable and lovable and cute and absolutely charming. My apologies to the neighbor's cat, it's just after seeing a film that was so cat-killingly bad, I had no choice but to destroy the nearest living creature. I mean, wow. Wow! God, Jesus, wow! Heaven above, Lord, shit, fuck, wow! This film is horrendous! I mean, it's god-awful! I could rip into this shit storm so much that... That's exactly what I'm gonna do! This is the odd, terribly disturbed life of Timothy Green. I'm sorry, Waffles. The film opens with a couple played by Jennifer Garner and Joel Edgerton, who are filling out the paperwork to apply for adopting a child. Oh, wait. You didn't answer what makes you qualified. Oh, we know. There wasn't much space. We had so much to say. Okay. Idiots. Word of advice. If your reasoning wouldn't work on your second grade teacher, chances are it wouldn't work on the United States Adoption Services. I mean, really? There wasn't enough space? That's what you're going with? Imagine using that excuse somewhere else in life. Here's my test, Mrs. Travers. Um, you failed to answer every single question listed. I know. I just had so much information I could put down for all of them, I decided not to. I'm sorry, that means you get an F. As in, fantastic? No, as in failed. As in failed not to be fantastic? No, as in you failed the test. As in I failed the test of not failing the exam you so currently gave to me? Why are you still here? I need a mommy. So they convinced the adoption agency to listen to their story about why there wasn't enough space. You're gonna find it hard to believe. This all began last September. It turns out the doctors say that Garner is unable to get pregnant, which forces them to drive back to Stanleyville, the pencil capital of the world. Ooh. Oh, and I'm not kidding. They really want you to remember that Stanleyville is the pencil capital of the world. They show countless footage of pencils being made. They have a soccer team called the Erasers. Edgerton works for a pencil factory. Gardner is a tour guide in a museum dedicated to pencils. By the time the movie is over, you want to eat the goddamn things. But our couple doesn't seem to have much of an appetite, as they're still heartbroken about Garner being as unfruitful as their vegetable garden. I can't do it. I can't move on. Then move out of the way. For years. We've been thinking about what our kid would have been like. We could move on tomorrow, just for tonight. Can we have a kid? You know, this might sound like a fucking radical idea, but uh, why not an orphanage? Yeah, a little weird seeing how the film opens up with them at the orphanage. So it's not like this never crossed their minds. If having a child meant so much to you, why didn't you just do that before? Were they... Afraid that something like Timothy might actually come to life and therefore have to turn another child down? Are my new parents nice? They certainly are, and they're gonna give you a good home. Oh, yay! I can't wait to have a real mom and dad. Oh, I'm so sorry. It says here that they've grown a child in the backyard and it's absolutely perfect in every way, in which case they don't have any need for you anymore. No need? None. I'm sorry. I know it's the third time this month. Man, fuck this shit. I'm 18, I'm still not adopted. But they decide to fantasize for just one night, and thus, the Build-A-Kid workshop is open. 
Would our kid be musical? Our kid <laughs> would rock. Ah! Love and be loved. How great an athlete are you picturing? You were terrible at soccer. Our kid, amazing kid, got to score the winning goal. Could you not show how in tune you are in such a loud, scary way? So they put their drawings of butt vaginas in a box and buried in the backyard, convinced they can now move on with their lives. But then... So we get our first look at Children of the Corn, who has leaves on his ankles and apparently is thoroughly convinced that he has always belonged to this couple. Call us Mr. and Mrs. Green. Mr. Green. Not many people do, but... Mom. Really? So, of course, they have to fill out a report or go to the police or put out posters saying missing child. Is he for us? I'm getting that feeling. Kidnapping works, too. I'm always shocked to me people don't consider that option. I mean, when you look past the whole illegal and emotionally scarring thing, it's actually pretty logical. You know, you can turn them into the authorities, guys. It's not like E.T. They have walkie-talkies now instead of guns. Oh, wait. They changed it back in the DVD version, didn't they? RUN TO ME, RUN! So Garner's sister shows up the next day and our new parents try to explain the appearance of our little friend. It was all very sudden and kind of miraculous. Hmm. I mean, I thought you were trying to have a real kid. Hey, let's add her to the list of horrible pieces of human shit in this film. Trust me, the list will grow. In fact, there's one right now, Edgerton's father who apparently spent most of his time away from his son, who has resented him ever since. But Timmy hopes he can win his grandfather over with a trailer shot. Ah uh, yes, he must be doing this because he's a plant and therefore basking when the sun comes out. Except for the fact that the sun was clearly out several other times before, but the cameraman wasn't ready for his 360 shot yet. His grandfather acts accordingly. What did you say to your father after he bunked the boy with leaves in the head? Complicated. I didn't say anything. Really? And yes, the adoption agency is still listening to the story and allowing them to continue. Because if I ran an adoption agency, I'd say to myself, Yeah, this is worth my valuable time. Not turning these people away and instead looking for parents who don't think the Cabbage Patch Kids are based on a true story. I'd listen to I can only imagine what that guy is writing down on his notepad the whole time. We're all working hard, I know. Oh, thank God, we almost took the focus of this movie away from pencils. Worst case scenario, my aunt and my father will have no choice but to close the factory. But Edgerton is called away from the pencil pushers as it appears Timmy has been beaten up at school. This kind of thing happened to me when I was your age. Yeah. And all I wanted was for my dad to have my back. And he didn't. Bottom line, as long as you come out of this with a healthy hatred of your grandfather, I'll consider myself a good father. But, oh, it turns out the father of those bullies is actually his boss. Wah, wah. Oh, Kid is it, my boys it, out. Are you really going to fight all his battles for him? You think that's why? <clears throat> why can't you be like me and let my kids get away with murder? Next Saturday, we're having a birthday party pool bash, and we'd love it if Timothy would come. Yes. Oh, please, don't tell me. You took him back to the house of the boys who bullied him? He really wanted to go. So you let him decide what was best. I thought it was time he learned to fight his own battles. We just forgot to ask if he could swim. And you're probably starting to see what the main problem with this movie is. Not the fact that they're telling a story that nobody not kicked by a horse could believe, or that they live in a town with more inbred jerks than a TLC show. Oh, don't get me wrong, those are great things to hate! But the parenting in this movie is awful. I mean, really, really awful. They're trying to tell the story to show how much they've learned, but all we ever see is them constantly acknowledge that they always make the wrong choices. How is that going to win them over? We were going to have the talk, the talk that we didn't really know how to have. That was the plan, the talk. And here's another little annoying tidbit they do a lot in this movie. The couple completes their sentences a little too often. 
Everything had changed. And there he was, leaves and all. It didn't matter where he came from. He was ours. Yeah, we were his. And we were a family. We were a family. <laughs> and when I say a little too often, I mean all the fucking time. How do you tell your child something's not possible? That it can't be done. When they believe in you like that. Well, we didn't want to disappoint him. No, we got busy. I'm sure, again, this is to show how in tune they are, but it's pretty obnoxious. I mean, they just never stop doing it. I love once to see a couple complete each other's sentences without getting right what the other was going to say. It didn't matter where he came from. He was ours. We were his. We were a family. It was the greatest day since... since he discovered Viagra. That wasn't what... A penis should look like, until he started taking it. Maybe if you let me finish. He would say all the time, but nothing ever came out. I don't think we should talk about this. Without visuals. Jesus Christ! He would cry every night until I showed him the online ads. Damn it, honey, this is already hard enough! What's the name of the brand we got? <laughs> this, this is... Why we can't have children. Can we just go back to talking about the child that we grew in the backyard? I think we are winning over much better with that. Right? What's with the straight face? Oh, and just to make things better, let's throw prepubescent lust into the mix. I think one of my stems is beginning to grow. Guessing that's the mating dance of mulch. Timmy seems to stay underwater for a while, and since the world's greatest parents are nowhere to be found, the girl dives in after him, ultimately discovering Timmy's little secret. Nobody touches the leaves, bitch! You saw right, folks. Sweet innocent Timmy kicked a girl he has a crush on right dab in the schnauzer. Sheesh, kid. When they said fight your own battles, they didn't mean underwater flash kicks. And speaking of fighting your own battles, what advice do mom and dad of the year have to give? What do I do about the girl I kicked in the head? Tim? Well, if you see her coming, just run the other way. <laughs> hey, kids, let's play a game. It's called Politicians. One second I'll say one thing, and then another moment I'll say something totally different. I thought it was time he learned to fight his own battles. Just run the other way. I thought it was time he learned to fight his own battle. Just run the other way. Fight his own battle. Run the other way. Fight his own battle. Run the other way. <laughs> now let's play another game. It's called Start Making Sense, you fucking tools! But she takes the whole having leaves on his ankle thing unrealistically well, as it turns out she has a jelly stain in the shape of Wisconsin on her chest. So I guess that means they have something in common. Of course, her secret is minor and pedestrian where he is a living abomination of nature. But we have to have something for this forced romance to go off of. Look out your window. You told him to run the other way when he saw her and he, he's not running. But Timmy's parents don't like this at all because I have no fucking idea. We don't know a thing about her, she's done nothing wrong, and yet they advise Timmy to constantly stay away from her. There are so many girls. It would be a mistake to focus on just one fish. What we're trying to say, son, is stay away from the girl we know nothing about. Exploring her differences could only get in the way of isolating her more. Ugh, this movie's too hard to watch and I need a break. We'll be right back after these people try to sell you something. <laughs> Hey, Mom and Dad. Or should I say, Lisa and Bob. Are you depressed that you can't have a child of your own? Are you sad that the miracle of childbirth will never take place in your life? Do you find it unbearable that you will never know the gift of creation, the growth of the young, or the unconditional love that any human being can ever give to you as long as you live? Are you tired of your shriveled up womb? DUDE! Well, cry no more, cause we've invented... Ch-ch-ch-child. Chia child. The instructions are very simple. Just write down exactly what you would like your chia child to be like, 
place it in the Chia Child box, bury it in the backyard, just add God, and Chia Child is yours. I always wanted a girl with no imperfections at all, just like a real child. Ch -ch -ch child I always dreamed of a little someone that I could project my insecurities onto, and now it seems that she's arrived. Look, I drew a picture about how much I hate Grandfather because he didn't raise you right. And now I get to pass down that hatred to you. Ch -ch -ch child Chia Child would last up to three months, or until you feel the emotional and symbolic justification of what it means to be a family. I'll admit, at first we didn't think we'd be very good parents. But Chia Child seems to be calm and pleasant no matter what horrible mistakes we make. So now we don't have to worry about any of that pesky moral responsibility. Chia Child simply combines these natural elements to give you that lovable family that you've seen in most Sears catalogs. And when Chia Child has worn out her usefulness, just bury her in the backyard and get another one. I'm so glad something like Chia Child exists. Yeah, I mean, do you know how long it takes to adopt a child? 18 months. Hell, I can get a gun in a week. Now make me a sandwich. Man, we're not. Chia Child, the child that grows when your parenting blows. Available in Daughter Lily and Sunflower. They signed Timmy up for soccer class, even though he has no talent in the sport and doesn't really have much interest. Even rappers looking to tell their wives their I did a damn kids movie agree. This would be really good for him. Well, this is the best possible way for him to make some friends. Right. Coach Cal doesn't see it. Coach Cal likes speaking to the third person. Coach Cal thinks of an old crusty white man like Bob Dole can do it. Coach Cal can too. But Coach Cal signs him up anyway because Coach Cal likes losing? Excuse me, Coach. I just want to say that I, I'll be working with him around the clock if necessary, just to get him, you know. Oh, to tell the next me level. you're not those kind of parents. The type to get over involved, over invested. We are definitely not those kind of parents. We never get invested in what our kid does. He almost drowned the other day. Then we won't have a problem. Well, this is all fine and good, but can we find some way to bring this back to pencils? That Halloween, your mom went as a pencil. It feels to me that with a pencil, anything is possible. That is so true. Yes! Pencils are lead-filled goddesses of the universe, and don't you forget it! To think that we may not be making these anymore. Mm. Why not make a new kind of pencil? Didn't you hear? The pencil is already perfect! To redesign it would be to redesign Avalon. So they decide to make a new pencil, one made entirely out of leaves. Yeah, I know, I call bullshit too. But not as much bullshit as this scene, where Garner takes Timmy to her work, and her boss, played by Diane Weist, is not thrilled about her new portrait. Little man, what do you think of that? Not much. I would have done it for free. You suggesting you could do it better? I can try. Let's find out. He has only 10 years old and he's somewhere to be. Of course I do, but shoo. Okay. Just leave me in a room alone with your son, who I've only known for a few minutes, and yet I am instantly forcing a challenge onto. So of course, Timmy naturally draws her. My heart was pounding the whole time. It was the most erotic moment of my life. Of course, the picture looks great, but unfortunately he adds a little too much detail in the goat chin department. Watch Garner, once again, be a great role model for her kid. So, what else aren't you telling me? Sometimes you wear plaids and stripes that clash. Your one joke that you always tell, it's not funny. I have tried so hard to like you, but if someone asked me to be a pallbearer at your funeral, I would tell them, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. And furthermore... Cindy lost her job. I lost my job. Oh. That's fine. I mean, at least you still have the other job that we've been discussing the last hour and a half is going to go out of business and most likely leave you financially stranded. He didn't know what he was doing with the girl. So Cindy did what she thought was best. Oh, this can only make you look better. We need to talk. Okay, let's talk. I don't think that you're the best influence on my son. And I want you to tell me what you know about him. What is... What did she do? Lady, last I checked, your kid nailed her in the fucking head! Who's a bad influence on who? Well, it's a hard
Hard world to be different in, and I don't want him to be hurt by you or anyone. I won't let it happen. I see the way you pay attention to him and show concern in his life. I think it's sick. So she finds out they were building a little hideout for each other and that the girl she had no reason to hate, surprise, she has no reason to hate. So maybe this will teach her not to be so hasty with her decisions, even with her contrived, unrealistically nasty sister. Did you know Timothy is gifted? How so? He always finds a bright side. Well, that'll get you into college. <laughs> He's a great artist. Well, look where that got you. I have to say, I am, but I'm listening. I'm just checking to see if my name's replaced the C word yet. He's musical. Really? So she makes up a lie about her son, and wouldn't you know it, the sister calls Timmy up unexpectedly at her recital to have him play something. Sit back and enjoy the musical stylings of Timothy Green. You know what? We're running late. No, Mom, it's okay. You know what? It's fine, Mom. Okay, for the record, just because you make one the spawn of Satan doesn't make the other one a good human being. So... How will Timmy get out of this one? All my friends know the low rider. You know, I remember when I paid good money to hear Josh Groban and his wonderful angelic voice, but spur of the moment, just whimsical magic, he bent over backwards and started tooting a horn out of his butt cheeks. It was butterflies in your stomach awkward and sounded horrendous, but at least he was having fun? I got a fever, and the only prescription is more cowbell. So I guess the movie feels they won that moment. And the next day at the game, Edger's father shows up and starts to leave. But his son guarantees him that this time Timmy will be put in the game because all season the coach has been leaving him out. It is your difference maker today. That is your game changer right there. I'm kidding, right? Do I look like I'm kidding? If I put your son in the game, you wouldn't live to see his next birthday. If you don't mind, we got a game to win. I'm sorry. Why did Coach Cal pick him if he knew he was never going to use him in the game? Coach Cal has a sick sense of humor. Coach Cal likes to see children's dreams get obliterated by Coach Cal. Oh, yes! No! 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 Is he okay? He's an asshole. I hope he's okay. But one of the kids hurts their ankles, and so he does end up putting him in the game. Okay, Green, come on. Oh, hit me with a stick. They're not putting that boy in. Actually, they are. It's good. Trust me. <laughs> Who's your daddy? Has he been drinking? I am so disgusted by this human emotion you mortals call love. At first, he seems to do little. But then the sun comes out and... Special delivery. Just like we practiced. I don't believe it. Don't believe it, sister. For years I've been listening to how perfect your kids are. Well, look at that. That kid is mine. I could have been like that because I had skills, but no. no. <laughs> oh, that's what it's all about. Our kid accomplishing goals set by other people's standards. And look, he even makes the winning shot for the other team. Yeah, that's right. You thought that cliche died with the 90s, but nope, Disney brought it back. Do you get it though? Do you get it? In the opening, they predicted that their boy would shoot the winning shot. It just happened to be for the other team. No, oh, you should have been more specific on your boy growing cards. Stop. Your time's up. You have you to have let us finish. You have to hear the whole thing. You, Please, you have to. Excuse me, with all due respect, we're not leaving. Okay. What the fuck? That said, it's your time to use as you choose. Yeah, the scene they don't show you is this. I decided that our son would not be seen as different or weird. He'd be treated like a normal kid. Yeah. Because that's what he was going to be. Timothy! I don't mean to pry, buddy, but it looks like you just broke up with her. No. I let her go.
Well, that is so tragic, despite that breaking up and letting go is essentially the same thing, but... I'm sorry! What does any of this have to do with pencils?! This is a new kind of pencil, made almost entirely out of lead. I swear, if someone doesn't fuck a pencil by the time this movie is over, I'll make sure it happens for them. Yeah, it, it will not only save trees, but will save our factory. <laughs> but it turns out the boss, the one drinking the great big boss mug, you see, he's the boss in case you forgot, uh -huh, he's the boss, is taking credit for creating the leaf pencil. But Timmy stands up and tells the truth. The new pencil was thought of by my parents, Jim and Cindy Green. Oh, look here, it's the boy who kicked the winning goal for the other team. <laughs> Children are to be mocked and shamed. Do not pick on my son. If you ever so much as even look at him funny, you will have to deal with me. And me. I'm here for my last minute redemption. How did you come up with this idea to make a pencil out of leaves? Because I have leaves in my legs. So they reveal that they must have come up with the idea to make a pencil out of leaves because, well, it's probably made out of half of his kin. I used to have more. But being the ever-observant douche pinatas that they are, the parents never noticed all this time that his leaves were falling off. And he finally reveals that when the leaves go, so does he. Sweetie, you can't. There is so much that we have left to we're do. We're just starting to get good at this. You're ready. You were always ready. Lick my dick, movie! They're as ready to start a family as a goddamn suicide club! So he vanishes, presumably going to the great fertilizer in the sky, and our now childless parents finish their tale. Thank you. I think that's all we need. That's it? That makes you... Thank you. I'm going to call the phone service and get the mental ward on speed dial. So... If you worked for an adoption agency and heard a story that was so bizarre that even Rod Serling would start chewing his balls off in the middle of it, also taking into account that the parents have done nothing but proven how incompetently unprepared they are to take care of a human being, would you allow them to have a child in their custody? Of course you would! I'm surprised they didn't give them six, ten, hell, half of the orphanage to look after! Yeah! I believe it! I fucking believe it! Wow! J -j -j just wow! You know, let's assume just for a moment that this story that would have gotten tons of media coverage didn't make it to the attention of the adoption agency, and they did their research and found that it checked out. The reason that these two should not be allowed to have a child is explained in one scene shown earlier. What would you do differently? We'd make better mistakes. Better? Different. Not the same. New. New mistakes. That's... that's what we do. <laughs> Isn't that how you know you're a parent? <laughs> so, your argument is you fucked up, you're glad you fucked up, and you will continue to fuck up in new and spectacular ways. but it happens so you can get better and make the right choices. These two never got better at what they did. If anything, they just got worse and worse. Why? Because they never learned that you're supposed to learn. You wanna know one of the most important things you can do for your kid that these parents almost never did throughout this entire film? Ask your kid questions. Think about it, they almost never did it! Right down to, where did he come from? What do you know? Say, you seem to know a lot about this stuff, but seem very mysterious about it. Would you mind telling us that? What are your likes? What are your dislikes? Fuck it, we're signing you up for soccer! Do you play any instruments? Fuck it, go up there and play something! Who's that girl? I don't care, stay away from her! It's why they never knew anything! Well, I can tell you that I know something for sure, this movie is a cock salad! I feel bad because I know the actors are trying. Hell, the kid is actually even pretty good at it. But I'm sorry, no amount of acting skill can save something this horribly put together. 
It knows what it wants to say, but it has no idea how to say it correctly. It's a bad vegetable that should be turned in for better produce! I mean, hey, everybody should get a practice kit before they get a real kid to try out on. Well, maybe not everyone, just these sick, selfish idiots! Oh, I'm the nostalgia critic, I remember, so you don't have to! Keep your cats away from me! Cause cow doesn't see. Hey guys, Nostalgia Critic here. It's good to be back, especially after being in that surreal plot hole. I mean, true, the accommodations could be nice, but it does weird things to your memory. Like there was one point where I didn't even recognize myself, and I even started going crazy reviewing all my old stuff, like Kick Assia, Suburban Nights, and To Boldly Flee. There was even a strange moment where I thought they were not good, and even started making fun of them. <laughs> and because you probably love to see me make an ass of myself, it's now available on DVD. For a limited time only, you can get Nostalgia Critic Reloaded. But it not only has a review of the anniversary films by yours truly, it also has a live review of Twilight Breaking Dawn 2, other characters remembering the Nostalgia Critic in fond and mostly non-fond ways, the best Nostalgia Critic moments that never happened, featuring Ego Raptor, a look at the original locations and sets of the Nostalgia Critic, and more. So what are you waiting for? Get Nostalgia Critic Reloaded on DVD while they're still in stock. And maybe you can see me... uh... loaded.